Good day, grade 12s. Welcome to lesson number 69 from one of my textbooks, The Distinction Bound Student, grade 12. Right, we have grade 11 and grade 10. Right, uh, in this lesson, I'm going to introduce a new topic. And if you check here, we completed dynamics of perfect markets. So now we're moving on to dynamics of imperfect markets. Once we're done with this, we go there. We are done with microeconomics. All right, coming back to our lesson, um, we, we, in perfect markets, we have three, uh, three I can say, uh, types of market structures. Ne? We have monopoly, we have oligopoly, we have monopolistic. All right, so in a monopoly, uh, if I can just summarize the, 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 the main differences between the three. In a monopoly, we have one seller selling a unique product in monopolistic we have many sellers selling differentiated products in oligopoly we have few firms selling uh, either homogeneous or heterogeneous depending on the type of oligopoly all right let's uh, start with cost and revenue curves so i'm going to start with the cost curves right um there's a table you will see it shortly in that table we have um quantity, fixed cost, and so on. So quantity is the number of units produced, like from zero going upwards. And then fixed cost is the cost that doesn't change. Uh, we have done it when we did dynamics of perfect markets. Variable cost is the cost that changes as output increases or decreases. We use more petrol when we drive more, something like that. And when we don't drive, we use zero. But with fixed cost, if you are renting a car, let's say for the Uber business, and the owner of the car wants 2,000 Rand a week, that 2,000 Rand is your fixed cost. But depending on the request for that particular week, you could have more requests. So in that week, you are going to use more petrol. So that's variable cost. If you stay, stay, uh, spend most of your week sick and you're at home, then you are going to use less petrol or nothing at all. Right, so total cost is fixed plus variable. So you can see clearly, I mentioned it before, but clearly you can see that if fixed cost is a combination of these two, so fixed cost will always be at least equal or more. It will never be less than VC or FC. What I mean is, if this is 10 and this is zero, total cost is 10. Do you see that our total cost will be equal to our fixed cost then? But if this is 10 and this is 5, this one is 15. So do you see 15 is greater than 5 and greater than 10? So our total cost will always, if you see a, 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 that curve, like yeah, on the graphs, you will see mainly the AC because the total cost, we divide them by the quantity. So we normally draw the AC curve. And you always see, you sometimes see a variable cost curve when you want to explain shutting down and so on. So this will always be below this one because of what I just explained. And our average cost is our total cost divided by this item here, our quantity. And our marginal cost is the cost incurred for producing one additional unit. So uh, if we produce 10 units, and let's say it costs us two rents to produce the 10th unit, to produce the 11th unit, it costs us a bit more than it did the the, the previous unit, let's say two rand one cent. The next unit, two rand two cents, like that. So it's the cost incurred for producing one additional unit. And when we go to the tables and stuff, you'll see why the MC is increasing at that pace. Right, the next one is revenue. Okay, revenue will to, uh, draw a different table and explain it there. But revenue is the money that you get, uh, that's your income. The next one is marginal revenue. So marginal revenue is just like marginal cost. It's the money you get for selling one additional unit. Here is the cost incurred for producing one additional unit. Then cost curves, it's all of them, these ones. All right, so let's look at the cost schedule here. Right, um, fixed cost, like we said, it doesn't matter whether you don't produce or you produce, you have to pay a fixed amount. Variable cost, it changes. And in this case, you see it increases each time we produce an extra unit. 
Now our fixed, co our total cost is an addition of these two. So 50 plus 10, that's our 60 there. Average cost is total cost divided by our quantity. So we have 60 divided by 160. 65 divided by 2, 32, like that. Then our uh, average variable cost, we then come to VC, we say this divided by that, simple. 15 divided by 2, 7.5. Then our marginal cost is the change in total cost divided by change in quantity. So it's 60 minus 50, that's 10 divided by 1. So that's the 10 here. Then 65 minus 60, that's the 5 there. Okay, but let's look at something here. Let's try to uh, draw these curves. I'll draw them in the air. Okay, look at our fixed cost. It's like this fixed cost, 50 rand throughout. Ne? Look at our variable cost. It's going like this 10, 15, 19, 25, 30. You see that? Like this. VC, ne? it's going up. Look at our total cost. It's 50, it's 60, like this, 60, 65, 69, like that, our total cost is going up. Look at our AC. Now, here, that's where you will try to, if we were to continue, you'll see something here. 60, that's why it drops, 32, 25, 18. Do you see that? It's sort of flattening here at 16, 16. Now, look here. 16.17 16.43 so it's now starting to go up if i continued with my numbers you would see a shape like this you see that because here it starts to flatten out and then it starts going up let's look at our variable cost our variable cost average variable cost sorry this is 10 7 6 6 7 9 you see the shape just like our ac ne? Right, look at this uh, previous page. Look at this when we're doing uh, monopoly. Ah, perfect. You see that? Where else did I draw? Yes, this. Look at that shape. That's what I'm saying here. So here we are seeing, in a way, why is it like that? Ne? All right. Then the last one is MC. MC, marginal cost. Uh, it's 10, it's 5, it's 4. You see that? It's 6, it's 9, it's 13. So our marginal cost curve. But our marginal cost curve is a bit different. Let's say it starts at 10. It goes to 5. It goes to 4. 6, 9, 13, 18, 24. Do you see why it has such a shape? To say 10, 5, whatever. Then it starts to go up. That's the reason why it's like that. All right. So here I tried to use the figures in that table to construct those, but they don't really show the exact shape because of my numbers. If I was to adjust my numbers a bit, uh, just to, or if I would have a bigger table and more data in the table, you will eventually see the AC starting to go up and you'll see the MC and what like that. Okay, so if I had uh, more time to just think and come up with the correct, the, the right numbers that will give us such a shape, it will be nice. But the concept has been understood. All right. Uh, then let's go to revenue curves. Now, revenue curve, just like cost curves, uh, you will see more or less the same thing here. But uh, you will see them going down in a way. All right. So we have first one total revenue. It's our average revenue times our quantity average revenue that's our uh, uh, ar that's our tr divided by our quantity this is ar times quantity this is tr divided by quantity you see that okay when we multiply we're going to uh, tr when we divide we're coming back to ar mr i explained it already is the money we get for selling one additional unit and um, let's see the numbers okay this is our quantity 0 1 to 9 and this is our price now do you see that our price is going down 20 18 16 so it's because of our demand curve in a way and that is our demand curve as we 
as we produce more, we are giving up a few rents. So the more we produce, the less we have to charge. So do you see what I mentioned before? That in imperfect markets, and a firm, if they want to charge six and they are currently producing nine, the only way they can do it is to restrict output and charge, you see, and make eight. So sort of making that item scarce in a way, if I may say. Uh, if you make a lot of products and many people are buying them, you may want to create shortage and produce less so that that product is scarce and then the price will go up. You know the law of demand and supply. Right? So they can restrict output and charge more. Do you see that as output is less, the price they charge is more? Right. Then we have our total revenue here. It's simply 20 times 1, 20. 18 times 2. Okay, so do you see that our total revenue doesn't increase the way it does in perfect? Because in perfect, the price is 20, 20, 20 throughout. So it's 20 times 1, 20. 20 times 2, 40. 20 times 3, 60. So here it will be 20, 40, 60, 80 like that because the price is the same. If you start with 4, it's 4, 8, 12, 16 like that. But in this case, do you see that our total revenue is increasing? but not at the same pace. It's not saying 20, 40, 60, it's saying 20, 36, 48. So by here, it would have been at 60 already. Okay, the next one is average revenue. Uh, but with our average revenue, we say total revenue divided by quantity. So 20 divided by 120, 36 divided by 2, 18. This divided by, do you see something? Our price is the same as our uh, AR. So you'll see, when we draw these curves, we will see something like this. D is equal to AR. Already you can see why we'll say that. Okay, because this will be our D, demand curve, and this will be our AR, they are equal. Now let's look at marginal revenue. The formula we say change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. So, Quantity changed from 0 to 20, so it changed by 20, divided by 1, 20. It changed from 20 to 36, so it changed by 16, divided by 1, 16. Changed by 12, divided by 1, 12, like that. So, what scenario do you see here? This one is decreasing to 18. Do you see that? This is two, it, it, it's, so as this, no, it's not de decreasing by 18, it's decreasing by 2. But this one is decreasing two times the rate. Do you see that? 20, it decreases by 2. 20 to 16, it decreases by 4. It decreases by 2, it decreases by 4. By 2, by 4, by 2, by 4. So what scenario are we going to have? We are going to have a scenario like this. You see? MR. In a way, if I was to draw a, a, a 90 degree, like, Okay, a line that will give us a 90 degree angle there. This part here, this part here must be equal to, did I say that? Must be equal to this part. You see? Because this one is the one that I'm saying, uh, it's, not, it's not constant. It's decreasing by 2, right? As we increase, it's decreasing by 2. But this one is decreasing at a higher rate. It's decreasing by 4. You see that? So, there's two. These points here, they must be equal. This and that, they must be equal. Right. And this proves that if you use these numbers and draw it like I did here, here, you will see something here. You will see uh, the same scenario. All right, so now I've explained it already. If you check our total cost, uh, our total revenue, sorry, do you see it's 20, 20, 36, 48, 50, 60, 60, you see? 56, so it gives you something like this. Our AR and our MR are, are, are 
drew them there, uh, you see that scenario there. All right, um, look at this product here. Uh, you can say, wow, this, favorite, this restaurant makes the best, the best cocktail. Why? Because of the way they make them. They try to make them different. Of course, it can be the same, it can have the same name, but how they mix and how they do it, extras they put, and they just bring it to you. Now, the secret is, they'll bring it to you in such a way that you say, wow, this is the best I've ever tasted. Right. Now, you, you can't really ask them. You can ask them, how do you make it? But they won't tell you. I'm trying to get somewhere here. Information is incomplete. Right. They don't, you don't really need to know how they make it because you go home and make it yourself. In a way, let me see. So they can have their secrets there. And uh, if you like the secret, if you like the output, the, the way it tastes, then you are going to be a loyal person to them because you are going to them specifically because of uh, 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 the, the fact that the product is differentiated. You see what I'm, where I'm going in this? Look at this product. You can take a sip from this and that and you can tell the difference. You see? Take a sip from these two, you can see a difference. So this is an example of uh, that kind of a scenario. I put them here again. These products are differentiated. They, they all taste the same. Um, let, me, let me just quickly take this opportunity to go back. Okay, okay I don't know why he doesn't want to, to listen to what I'm doing. Okay. I, I, I forgot to mention it when we did Dynamics of Perfect Markets. But I just want to show you this example because I put a picture as well where we started this one. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, we have grapes. If I take another another bunch from another farmer, and if it's green like this shape, this brand, this uh, I'm saying brand, this shape, this type of this seed that was used here, farmer B can use the same seed and is going to produce the same grapes. Same, same, same. Look at that apples. You see, carrots. If we if we go to um, buy the same seed and we go plant, we are going to have the same carrots. It doesn't matter where we plant them. Look at that bananas. They'll taste like bananas twenty four seven. Okay. Right. Coming back to our lesson. Um, let me not go fast. Coming back to our lesson. Right, I think basically I'm done with the lesson. That reminds me, I saw something there. So I'm going to conclude this lesson with something that I saw. So going back was a good thing. Right, I'm giving you homework. Differentiate uh, fixed cost from variable cost. All right, it's as simple as that. All right, I realized that I didn't give you answers to that test. So I have to give you that test. Eh? All right, dynamics of perfect market. There we go. All right, so you have written the test. Now I want you to mark yourself, and those are the answers. So thank you so much. Post the lesson and finish marking, and I'll see you in the next lesson. All right.